Now, listen, Barnsley, fantastic to have you here. Um, you focused, uh, for those who were, were enjoying the London Irish bath, you, you dropped Carl Dixon in it, saying that he didn't make it into the 22 when a try was scored, so therefore there will be a fine. Um, how tight, how close is the refereeing community? Because to us, you're all quite a strange bunch. Um, we, we are a strange bunch. I know most people think we're just there to ruin their afternoons, um, but we're pretty close as a team. Um, you know, we're all in tomorrow um, at Twickenham. We'll be, we'll be training pretty hard. Um, look, we never want to be mentioned as referees. Um, if we can finish a game, it doesn't help when I'm here commentating and helping Carl Dixon, you know, make a prat of himself. Um, but we don't want to be mentioned after a match. So m my aim as a referee is to go in there, referee the game, leave, and everyone talking about the players. And that's why we train hard physically. So, um, you know, we stay out the way and, and we keep up with play. Um, but we also review very thoroughly. We'll be in, be in Twickenham tomorrow. We'll be trying to improve our accuracy. So what's really interesting is, about 200 tackles and breakdowns in each game. There's 15 scrums, there's 35 lines, about 250 decisions that we have to make a game. And what we're trying to do is get up around that 90, 90 plus percent mark of accuracy. And that's why we spend time reviewing, um, you know, and the best in the world get up around that 90, 95 percent week in, week out. So you, as pundits and commentators, um, get a, a decent service, but more importantly, the players get a decent service that they deserve. And so that's all we're trying to do as a group of referees. OK, excellent. Well, let's have a look at, uh, at, at some of the aspects which are getting a few of the rugby fans and viewers, certainly on BT Sport Rugby, a little bit hot under the collar. So do um, tweet into us, hashtag GP tonight. Um, the Caterpillar Ruck seems to be a big area which has got people uh, a little bit uh, excited. Um, this is an example we're looking at here. Um, what do you, when you're looking at it, do you think this just doesn't look quite right? Look, I'm a fan of the game as much as I'm a referee as well. And as I said to you beforehand, based is what I want to try and do is add momentum to a game. How can I just make the game not stop? How can I make it really entertaining uh, for, the, the, for the fans? And one of the things which, you know, when I'm sitting there just watching as a punter, sometimes I sit there and I'm like, this is just taking an age for the ball to be recycled. And I think it's one of those things where the, the, the players have pushed the limits. You know, they are allowed five seconds once the ball's been kind of made available and before they have to use it. But we've got to sit down as, as, a, as a group, and I mean not just referees, but coaches, players, um, broadcasters, commentators, and say, right, how do we make this game even better? Because that's what we all want. We want this game better. So we want ideas. So it's not just a referees pushing their agenda. It's saying, how do we make that better? Because the new fans, the, the people who are going to be watching the Six Nations, you know, just turn in once a year. We just want them to love our game because we love it. And, you know, we don't mind things like that. But we want the new viewers to love our game even more. I think on the Caterpillar, right, the, one of the problems that I've seen is referees will often warn people. But then they'll take another five, ten seconds and they won't do anything about it. So I don't know when the last decision was given against anyone for slow play when we're, when we're setting up those box kicks. And, and almost, you know, the directors of rugby will say, well, we're not getting penalised for that, so we won't address it. But as soon as you start losing ball in that situation, they'll, they'll start speeding up. So you almost need, it's like when, when we change the, the interpretation on the, the high challenge, suddenly we get a load of red cards or the high tackle, we get a load of red cards at the beginning and then everyone starts to adapt and actually it's a bit more sensible throughout the season. And I think maybe, you know, if we want to target this area, you have to be really strict for a few weeks. It'll start to change and, and then it'll generally be quicker. The trend will move for it to be quicker. Yeah, I think the last ruck between Wasps and Harlequins yesterday was 15 seconds just for <laughs> some context. Can't remember who the referee was, Wayne. <laughs> uh, I, think, I think you're right, though, Benny. You make a, you make a really good point. Look, I, I don't think I've ever turned over a ball there, but what we want to say to coaches is, look, are you, are you happy for us to do this? We know that's in the law, um, but we, d we don't want to go out there and just make a statement, you know, round seven of the premiership. But if we go in and we say, right, all directors rugby, if this is what you want us to do, we can implement that. We, we've got to do this as a game. It can't be us and them. It's got to be us as a game making these decisions. Bunty, let's move on to the scrum because there was a, there was an interesting moment which kind of highlighted this, this problem. Um, just before half time, we, we left from our viewing position right at the top here at the Medeski Stadium. You have to find a lift, go down about five floors, a few steps, a few tunnels, eventually you get pitch side. We left with the Bath coaching team just as a scrum was being set. By the time we got pitch side, however long that took, Stuart Hooper, who was in front of us, turned around and says, is that still the same scrum that's been put to be to put together? And it was. What can we do to preserve the scrum but make it just a little bit quicker? Yeah, look, I, I love the scrum as a competition, and I think we saw in the World Cup final, you know, what a devastating, you know, aspect of the game it can be. So we've got to keep hold of, you know, one of the, you know, the unique aspects of our game. Um, 
but we want to see the ball in play, you know, and that, you know, around that 16 minute point, you know, the, the commentators started talking more about the delay in the scrum than they were about the game. So um, we've got to come up with some ideas and that, that's improved coaching. That's, um, you know, making sure that the, the players stay in the contest. It's about not falling to floor and it's us making decisions as well. So we've got to get better at our job, but we've got to put pressure on teams as well and saying, look, if you're not going to buy into this, then we might get on, uh, we might get other players on the pitch who will. So we'll get rid of the two hookers. We'll get rid of two props and say, right, you're not keeping it up. Let's find two who will. But again, this isn't just about referees blowing their whistle. This is about saying, right, come on, coaches, help us out here. Come on, players, help us out here. We want the ball back in play. Um, let's get the ball back I in play. I think you can put a time limit on it. I, I think that the front rows, having sort of been in you know numerous scrum practices, you'll take the time that, that's there. You'll make sure everything's perfect. Now, obviously, you have to. there's a safety element. But, you know, American sport, we, we get criticised in this country as soon as we do anything that Americanises our, our sports. But for years, they've had a play clock in the NFL where you've actually got a certain amount of time and you've got to have the snap away. And I think you could do something similar where you've got to be set, ready to go for the scrum with everyone bound, ready to engage within 30 seconds. Now, that sounds like a, a long time to us, but look at some of those scrums that reset. They're taking two, three, four minutes out of the game. And we, we've got more ball in play time than ever. So it's not the fact that people are being starved of, of, of game time where it should be running around. It's the fact that because the game's so much more fluid now, we notice it more and it's taking longer. So it just interrupts the flow of the game. And that's the big problem. You've got all this great rugby that we're wanting to see. And then we have this lull of three, four minutes while, while us big fatties have a wrestle with each other. Um if you think that Ben is talking sense, I personally think he is. Do do let us know. Hashtag GP tonight. Um, Goody, I don't know what your views are on the scrum. We can't get rid of the scrum, as Barnes is saying. It's an integral part of it. But it does seem to be the bet noir at the moment of the game as far as keeping the game going, keeping it moving. Yeah, 100%. And it is an integral part of the game. It's something that, you know, Barnes, you mentioned the World Cup final. You know, we're English and we got dominated in the scrum in the World Cup final. And that, that's one of the reasons South Africa won it. So you, if you take that out of the game, we move to rugby league or similar things to that. And the shapes of players have changed a lot. Um, so you need to keep that in there to allow there to be more space. You need forwards to be tied out at some point. So Anthony Watson gets his hands on the ball, goes to find a tired defender, makes an ex you know ex an exciting break. But um, yeah, the timing clock is the thing, I think, to look at. You know, We do it with the goal kicks. We do it with penalty kicks at goal. And conversions, so why can't we do it on reset scrums? And again, it's an energy. You you go to some of the training grounds around the Premiership, and you see the energy in a scrum session for training. It doesn't seem to be replicated on the field sometimes. So perhaps that's something that we all work together. Referees talk about the energy of a scrum. Let's get it done. Let's get it on, and let's get the ball in and out, okay. or let a scrum dominate. Scrums are taking well, too much time on I this. Agree so on, we'll I agree on the fatigue point. Quite ironic. And yeah. You <laughs> speed it up. They don't get their breath back, so they're going to be even more fatigued. We're going to see even more running rugby. Yeah, OK. Talking about the running rugby and, and players taking the ball into contact, the choke tackle oh, rears its, it. it, it's, its ugly it. head. You don't I, like this. No, because the, the laws in rugby were set a long time ago before certain tactics became about. So the more law is... is fairly ancient really and what constitutes a more and it's designed to stop you you know what when you set up a mall is is designed for when you're actually having a mall not when a center's trying to burst through a tackle three people tackle him so his teammates come in to try and drive him on through and get him to ground that's not a mall that's a failed tackle or a guy that's trying to stay on his feet and keep the ball alive so I don't think that should be called a mall and you, you'd have to change the definition of what a, a mall is at the moment it's uh, a tackler and a ball carrier and where so sorry the ball carrier and then one player from each side uh, constitutes a mall I think it should be moved to the, the ball carrier's uh, support player has to actually touch the ball because then he's trying to transfer or he's got his hands on the ball. Until then, I don't think it should be called a more. I think what we're all saying is we want to keep the ball in play a bit more. So, you know, scrums, get the ball back in play. Mauls, it gets a choke tackle and then we turn the ball over and have a scrum. I think what everyone wants to see, whether it's it's fans, whether it's commentators, whether it's referees, is let's, let's keep the ball going. Let's keep the momentum in the game, you know. And we saw some examples today where it ends up being referred to the TMO and all of a sudden the game's dead for two minutes and of course there's some exciting times but if we can as referees as well keep momentum in the game by not reviewing so much and by when we are reviewing just getting it done with really quickly you know and with a lot of speed then I think that's where we can all add to the game.